Hello, my name is Gerald Lewis. I'm a general physician and a cardiologist and welcome to another of these medical talks on the web. question I'm frequently asked by my patients is, Doctor, do I really need to take nutritional supplements? And my response is, you're almost certainly already taking them. In many countries, certainly in New Zealand, they've added iodine to our salt. Every pregnant woman is given folic acid, and in many countries, they're adding folic acid to the bread. If you're anemic, we'll give you iron, vitamin B12, folic acid. So it's already part of conventional medicine, and certainly farmers and vets always supplement their animals because no matter how good the feed is, they realize that they don't get all the nutrients the animals require. Because if nutrition is not in our food, then we're not going to get it. So what nutrients do we need? Our bodies have developed over millions and millions of years and all of our organs work together as a perfect team to grow, to keep us well, to fight disease and repair damage. And if you have a look at the chemical reactions going on in our liver and realize that not only does those happen in our liver, but all over our bodies, it is incredible what is happening inside our bodies 24 hours a day, seven days of work. And for our cells to work properly, they need every ingredient for all of these chemical reactions to work properly. And those ingredients can only come from the food that we eat. Now we've evolved or been created, depending on your philosophy, over millions and millions of years. And our bodies are designed to receive nutrition, to enable our bodies to grow, to be protected from the outside world, to fight against infection and diseases, to heal, and also to recover from injury, disease, and illness. And all of these things will happen automatically inside our bodies, but we do have a definite role. Our genes are exactly the same as the genes of early man, so our role is the same as early man's role. And our role is, number one, to protect our bodies from toxins and dangers. Now, early man, toxins and dangers were a great deal more obvious. Today, they're in many cases obvious, but many cases insidious, and certainly much more difficult to get away from. So our number one role is to protect us from toxins and dangers. Our second role is to give our cells all the nutrients they need to make these metabolic pathways work properly. We need proteins, sugars and fats, and we need minerals and vitamins. Now, even if your diet is poor, most diets will give us enough protein, sugars and fat, but it's much more difficult to get all the minerals, vitamins and two particular fats. Early man got all of these from roots, berries, nuts, fruit, fresh fish and fresh meat. But other communities have also eaten well and had the same sort of benefits. Our grandparents and great-grandparents and people before them, people living in, Medi in the uh, island countries and people living in the Mediterranean basin. These people had a diet which is far better than ours. The Heart Foundation would probably frown at what great-grandpa great used to eat, but in actual fact, it was very much more complete than today's food. Island communities eat huge amount of antioxidants with fresh fruit, vegetables and nuts. And the Mediterranean countries eat a lot of fresh fruit, vegetables, nuts, fish, and wine. Their food was fresh, filled with antioxidants, to some extent unpolluted with sprays and toxins, and in most cases is unprocessed. And they had far less of the degenerative diseases of today, heart disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. And it's interesting, even in 1967, when Monica and I graduated from Otago Medical School, we had no coronary care unit in Dunedin Hospital because heart disease was so rare, diabetes was rare, Alzheimer's wasn't even in our textbook, and cancer was much less common. And that's when Elvis was the king. So we're not talking about a long time ago when disease, these diseases were much less common. It matters where you live. Have a look at this graph from the United Nations on deaths per 100,000 population from heart disease. New Zealand up near the top, 127. But look at the Mediterranean countries down the bottom. France, 39. Despite the billions of dollars we spend, these diseases, heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, etc., continue to grow. Look at these graphs. This is heart disease in the United States between 1970 and 2003. It continues to rise. Breast cancer, all forms of cancer rising throughout the world since the 1980s, almost doubled since the 1980s. Alzheimer's disease increasing. Look at 1984. It hardly occurred at all. And the graph is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And probably the most frightening disease of the modern world is diabetes, which in every civilized country is getting higher and higher. And quite a frightening study came out from the CDC in the United States. One child in three born in 2010 is going to develop diabetes unless we do something about it. And that's our children and our grandchildren. Money we're spending seems to be going down the drain because it certainly is not reducing 
these diseases. And the reason is that we're concentrating on mostly on drugs and they just won't work. And they won't work simply because we throw drugs into this magnificent series of metabolic pathways generated over millions of years. And these drugs screw up these beautifully designed pathways. They may temporarily fix a headache or lower the cholesterol or drop the blood pressure, but they all have side effects, toxic effects, and they can all change our bodies. And those changes are usually to the bad rather than the good. But I'm not saying we shouldn't use drugs because we do need to use drugs and I'm using them all the time in acute medicine. But let's make it our last choice, not the first. Drugs are certainly essential for acute, acute medicine, but for prevention, they're far, far less effective. We hardly have one drug that has been shown actually to reduce the development of most of today's diseases. Now, if we fed ourselves and organs with all the nutrients they need, our bodies will protect us. They'll help us fight invaders and infections. They'll help reduce the incidence of cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's. Why? Because that is the way we are designed to be. So why can't we eat like healthy communities? And sadly, even if we ate the same food, it isn't the same. This is their idea of a salmon, not one living its life in a cage, being fed with antibiotics and colouring and hormones. That's what they ate for fresh fruit and vegetables, not sprayed, stored and processed. They ate free-range animals, not animals cooped up in a barn. That's their idea of fresh meat, not that. And their cereals were unprocessed complete, including rice, bread and grains, not the highly processed food of today. Now what should we be eating? We should be eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, fish, shellfish, and maybe on a regular basis a little bit of red wine. But do we and do our children? The answer, of course, you know is no. That's what they see on the television on the left-hand side. That's what they eat on the right-hand side. And unfortunately, fast food places are becoming places where children meet and have their social activities as well. So if we don't eat all those things at the top, and our children don't, then our only hope for good health is to supplement our diet. And that, of course, is to take nutritional supplements. And it's hard to see any person that should not disagree with that. If we ate as well as we could and took complete supplements, vitamins, minerals and fish oils, we could have a diet very similar to these healthy communities down the bottom of the screen. Would it work? Well, there's data that it would. The USA Nurses Trial, they studied 88,000 nurses and they've been following, following them since 1974. And heart attacks and deaths were reduced in those nurses taking supplements. And look at the reduction that happened in those nurses. Fish oils and sudden death. There have been numerous studies showing people with heart disease who took fish oils. These are the people who took dummy fish oil tablets, and these are the people who took fish oils. And in all those studies, sudden death was reduced by half or even a great deal more. And there are many trials showing that many cancers can be helped by taking vitamins, minerals, and other supplements. But are we starting too late? Heart disease, bone disease, we do know starts early. Diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's may all start when we're young. After the Vietnamese and Korean War, they did postmortems on the young pilots who were killed, and they found that over 40% of them had early coronary artery disease. So supplements should start early in life, probably as soon as we start eating solids, not in our 50s and 60s. And of course, that's what happens in these healthy communities. It's not just the adults who eat well, the children eat exactly the same food, which contains just the same nutrients. So the diet plus supplements should give us an ideal of nutrition, high vitamins, antioxidants, and optimal minerals. But unfortunately, most over-the-counter supplements don't provide what we need. McWilliam and 14 other nutritional experts have written a number of books called The Comparative Guide to Nutritional Supplements, working out what the ideal diet people should be taking. And along the bottom are the vitamins and minerals that everybody should be taking. And each one, 100% of the ideal dose are shown on that graph. Now, when you compare this with the most commonly used supplement in the world, you can see there are quite a number of vitamins and minerals, but just have a look at the dose. That's vitamin E, that's vitamin C, vitamin B6, folic acid, and vitamin B12. When you think it should be going up to the, each one of those should be going up the top for the ideal dose, we're hardly supplementing our people with anything at all when they take these supplements. So it's not surprising that most supplements have very little value. So if we took a diet as good as we can get and took a good comprehensive supplement, multi and fish oils, started at a young age and continued throughout life, we would have a nutritional intake very similar to the Mediterranean one. We could reduce heart and other diseases, just like in the Mediterranean countries, down to their level in one generation. In all the countries up the top of that graph, we could move them all down to the bottom. 
that is a real legacy which we could leave to our children and to our grandchildren. And these are my grandchildren, and I can assure you that's exactly what we are doing. So, Doctor, do I need to take nutritional supplements? My answer is if you want the best for you, your family, and your friends, indeed you do. But make absolutely certain that the ones you're taking are good, complete, and quality ones. Thank you for listening.